Okay, now it's time to talk about vocal tract shaping. What is vocal tract shaping? Well, it turns out vocal tract shaping is one of the most important things that you can learn about the voice, and here's why. We have something called a vocal tract, and the idea is that we want to keep it as close as we can within our vowel structures, okay? So we want very little shifting between our vowel sounds, the least amount of shifting as possible. We also want to keep our jaw stationary or as static as possible so it doesn't close off the back of the throat where we get contigu contiguous airflow. We want to keep that airflow going and keep away any stricture from the back of the throat. It's the reason we have the, the concave tongue and eventually how the tongue will come out or away from the back of the throat as you start to get in and move through the volumes. So vocal tract shaping is critically important to understand because what we're going to learn to do first is we're going to pick a song really easy. So I want you to start off with a song that's well within your range. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to learn to sing the song without any consonant sounds, which are what cause glottal stops or the shifting of the back of the throat to close off this air supply or airflow. And what we're going to do is we're going to work through the song first with vowel sounds only understand the shifting of the vocal tract or the shaping of the vocal tract and then gently and gradually add just enough consonant sounds in so where we can understand these words and understand them well and then a new way to remodify vowel sounds so that we get the least amount of shifting in the vocal tract. Now this may sound complicated but it really isn't. In fact let me go a step further. You've probably noticed in your exercises that as you've gone up and down these scales, you can sing fairly high. And you probably are even surprised at how high you're able to get. But you're a little frustrated because you're saying, well, wait a minute, you know, I've got this height, but I can't use it in songs yet. It's frustrating. I can sing all the way to a high C or an E or whatever, but I can't apply it to actual singing. That's what we're here for. We're going to apply this to actual singing. So if you're ready, let's get started with this now. I'm going to take one of the songs we've already done and I'll make it really simple and I'm going to break this down uh, a line at a time. All right, let's go. Cause I'm your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. Sometimes I am frightened, but I'm willing to learn of the power of love. Okay, so I'm not trying to kill you with notes or whatever, and I'm going to break this down and make this simple. Let's break this down a line at a time, all right? The very first line we did was, because I'm your lady. Did you notice I didn't go? I'm your lady. It would kill me. So what did I do? I went, I'm your lady. Remember I just said I want to keep the vocal tract the same. So I want my vowel sounds to be as closely related as I can. So let's do this again. Because I'm your lady. Now I want you to try this first without any consonant sounds at all. Hey, right? So notice I did all of my vowel sounds. Did you notice how little change there was in the vowels? Yet I'm able to make them or make you think you're hearing the words that I'm singing. Well, I am but I'm changing them a line at a time. So if you're ready, I'm gonna go through each word and we're gonna discuss each word and I'm gonna show you how to get into correct placement for these vowel sounds from moving from vowel to vowel so that you can apply what you're learning in the scales themselves to actual singing, okay? Let's do it. Okay, I didn't go, cause I'm your, I didn't say I'm your, I said ah. And the higher I go, the more I want to modify. I don't, there's, there's a lot of vowels I want to avoid up high, really high. One of them is a pure I. Another one is a pure E, if I can help it. A pure U, if I can help it. Or, or, or I have a transitional vowel. I start an O and then I shift into U, and I'll get into that in a second. And there's, again, I cover this more and more and more in the volumes as we go. And then the other one is U, like hook. 
to come into that vowel sound first is very difficult. So we actually change those vowels, and then one last one, it, like lid, it. We want to avoid those in the upper register. So I go, cause I'm your, cause I'm your, cause I'm your lady, not lady, it's eh, cause I'm your lady, or without consonants, hey, down lower, and you are my man. I'm not as affected by the vowel shifting, so I can I can close down on the vowel sounds a little bit more on the bottom. Whenever you reach for me, let's break that down. When when ya ooh. I don't go whenever you. I didn't do that. When I got to the ooh, whenever you. Oh, I'm exaggerating it, of course, but I, I, I start with the O vowel first, on O, and then I quickly transition to the U vowel. Whenever you, do you hear that? I did it, slowed it down. Whenever you reach for me, I went, whenever you, yo, and I went, O, oh, O, really quickly. Whenever you reach for me, now I can close the E down because I'm lower. Oh, all that I can. Okay, so we're going to go through this the next few lines, and each one of these I'm going to break down a line at a time so you can practice with me on doing this. So let's continue. Now this next vowel, we're heading for something, is okay because et is a great placement vowel for singing up high. So when I go, oh, we're heading, we're heading for something. However, did you notice when I went heading? I didn't get caught on the NG because I can't head ding nga, nga, nga. It's a very difficult, it locks down the throat, it locks down the cord, and it's very difficult to release from. So I go, oh, we're heading for s I almost don't even see ing, head in, but almost not even that. I use my tongue just to do a little work for me. We're heading for something. Now, some ing, some of ang. Something. And I'm just barely to not ing. Something, somewhere I've never been, not been, it's been. Sometimes I am fright, not I fright, it's frat. Sometimes I am fright. Notice I'm not, I'm not, I'm kind of staying with the same vowel sound through the whole thing. I'm trying to keep as close as I can to that vocal track. Sometimes I am fright, but I'm willing to learn. I'm not going to learn closing that down because it's hard, too hard to close that down. Now the key vowel is the end vowel. So it's pretty easy when you start to learn how these vowels all work together and how they transition and more very little. Now on the last phrase, on the power of love. So my goal here is to show you how to break this down. So what I want you to, to start doing is, in addition to your vocal practice of, of the scales and whatnot, take, a, take a, a song that you love that's in an easy key for you to sing and start to go through by singing the song with just the vowel sounds with the least amount of jaw shifting, trying to maintain the same amount of vowel, uh, le or least amount of vowel movement as possible. A, E, E, A, U and maintaining that vowel structure and modifying your vowels. And I'm going to show you what I mean on the last note because I want you to see how these vowels work if you're, if you're planting or placing or uh, hitting a certain note uh, that you want to um, change or have a different uh, word phrase that you're going to sing, how the vowel is very consistent. Okay? Check this out. Okay, so we just sing la, la for love, right? La, a uh, for love. The next thing I want to show you is let's say the power of live. The power of love. You see how closely related that la, la and it. They're almost the same vowel, but it's just la, la, eh, like lead. I just bring that vowel up, and if I'm going to close the vowel down, live, I can't do it. It's just it's too difficult to live. Remember, we're going to get rid of it, so it's eh, like lead. The power of lev. Okay. Let's talk about the power of look. I'm not going to go, power of look, woo, power of look, uh, I'm really singing the ah vowel, 
and at the last minute I close it down to uh to make you think I've been singing uh the whole time, right? Let's keep going. What if we want to sing the power of life? The power of life! Sounds a lot like love! Life! Love! Wait a minute. I just sang three different words, but I used the same vowel sound. Precisely. I had the least amount of vocal tract shaping or shifting, shifting of the jaw, shifting of the vocal tract itself, because I can be consistent with the perfect placement of that vowel, and all I need to do is maybe close it down a little bit to smile on E to make you think I'm hearing E, or close the front of the face down to OO to make you think I'm hearing OO, or just change it just a tiny bit. It's very subtle, but you're going to notice that the sound is bigger and more consistent and more open. It'll just sound free and be so free and easy to sing. All right, let's keep going. What if I'm singing something like The Power of Leaf? The power of leaf. Right? Did you notice that I went at eh first and rolled into E? So I used the same ah eh. Leaf. I was subtle about it. I was quick about it. But I really went at E and I rolled into the E so I didn't slam into an E vowel because that will stricture the sound also and pinch and close the sound down. So I don't want to sing a hard E if I can avoid it. I want to use another vowel to keep the throat open first and not shift that track that much or shape that track that much and roll into the E vowel. But we still want a pure E. No one wants to hear, you know, baby. They want to hear baby. They want to hear baby. They want to hear that E, right? They don't hear baby. But you can go, baby. Did you hear me go, A, A? At the end of that really quick, I shifted that vowel really quick to get me into E, but I used eh to get there, right? All right, let's rock on. What if I want to sing the power of laugh? The power of laugh, love, love, luck. It's all basically the same vowel. I'm just shifting it just a little tiny bit. And this is the genius of correct vocal track shaping, is not moving that vowel around so much so that we don't have to reset up a vowel sound and morph from vowel to vowel in big moves or big shifts, right? We want to keep the vocal track as closely related as we can in order to keep the least amount of movement and the least amount of jaw shifting. A couple more vowels, let's continue. I saved the power of loaf and the power of loof for the end because they're very similarly, similarly related. So if I go, the power of loaf, right, power of loaf. Okay, let's take loof. Loof! Right? Did you notice that I started on the O vowel? Loof! Loof! And I rolled from O into the O vowel because it keeps the throat open. If I just go loof, it's really hard to get there. It's much easier to go loof than loof and do that. That'll strain me. But if I go loof, All of a sudden, the vowel opens wide up. So that's true for singing the power of loaf. Loaf, loaf. I use the O vowel and quickly transition into the U vowel. Now again, this is going to seem kind of complicated, and I'm not trying to overcomplicate things, but I want to start you now on the journey of migrating or transitioning from all these scales and again training that we're doing to actual vocal coaching within songs, within um, phrases and with passages that we're going to be singing as we move along through the course here. So uh, understand that we're going to take these vowels that I'm showing you now, and I want you to experiment with them and see how you can keep the least amount of vocal track shaping and shifting moving on, not moving the jaw, and keeping things consistent. And you're going to be amazed at how well this works for you. Okay? Thank you for joining me.